started. Evelyn, guten tag. I don't, I don't know much German, but I hope that that's an introduction. My name is Bruce Smith, and I'm the Westland District Mayor. Now, Westland District is 354 kilometres long. It's got 8,800 people. And we've got a small town, and in our town, we have some inspirational people. And Jackie Grant, who you're dealing with, buying this Harrison semi-automatic machine built in about 1900, maybe 1910. That's 100 years ago. From here in Hokitika. Fantastic. Let me tell you about Jackie, <laughs> because it's really important. Jackie's about 75-ish. 78, thank 78. you. 78. <laughs> she, she, look, she gets around like a 16-year-old, but her history is unbelievably good. Nine years on the Human Rights Tribunal Commission in New Zealand. It's almost a record. She's fostered about 76 children. She's had two awards from the Queen, and one of them is almost the highest you can get. Now, for Jackie to receive those, it's, it's fantastic to get one award. But to get two, just brilliant. And what I can tell you about Jackie is, in dealing with her, whatever she tells you will be true. So keep that in mind. So I, look, I'm Bruce Smith. I'm the Westland District Mayor. Jackie's a friend of mine. And I commend her to you. And I hope you have lots of fun with your machine. We'll catch you later. <laughs> Sounded like a funeral eulogy. <laughs> Hello, this video is for mainly for Evelyn, but we are going to put it onto YouTube. It's a demonstration of the Harrison semi-automatic machine, which is very rare, probably made around 1910, 1920, possibly up to 1930. But to my knowledge, only three of these machines have ever been found. Um, so I've done this machine up. When, when, when I first found it some years ago, it was very rusty, um, in really bad condition. The cylinder was unworkable. So we've made new cylinders. We've made a set of new cylinders for it and some spares for other people that have got Harrison Sunettes, um, same cylinder fits. So, so nice shiny brass cylinders and um, they look really good and they work very well. So... We're very, I'm very thankful we've got the Mayor of Hokitika making this video for us, so it's very special uh, and it'll probably end up on the Coasters Club and YouTube as I said before. So let's um, start with casting on and we'll use one of the Inzac cast on baskets. Now this, this cast on basket is a little bit difficult to use with this machine because the Harrison cylinders we're only about four inch rather than four and a half inch. So, so they get a little bit tight, but it will work. So that's fine. Um, we've got to thread up the yarn guide. And unlike newer yarn guides, this is not a, a no thread one. So I just pull a needle through. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm going to pull through a couple of metres of yarn. I'm going to get round here so that I can tell what I'm doing. And I'm going to put my cast on basket up through the middle. And as I said, it is a tight squeeze. And Mr. Mayor, you might like to zoom in here just a little bit to show people how we thread these cast on baskets. So we go round the tine, round the needle, into those little tines in the bottom, round the needle, trying to keep the basket centred as much as possible, uh, especially on this machine. So round, 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 uh, round. You don't have to um, get every needle. If you miss a needle, it's okay. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'll see a latch open on a needle there, which I'll come back and fix. And that's how fast it is to cast on. Now I'll hang some weights under there. And we'll start going around. So we're now 
and then just pick up those last few. God, you're trying to do a film, everything screws up. We'll just go around these last couple of times. And break that off. Do a bit of cranking and we cast on. That's how fast it is. Another way of casting on, of course, is to use the crisscross method and crisscross yarn over and put your finger in and pull it down. Uh, but I, I like using the baskets. They're pretty good. And that went perfectly. Look at that. We didn't even miss a needle, which I usually do. So now I'm going to put the river on and I'm going to set it up for ribbing. Now we've got our river stopper post over here, about here, and we're going to put the river down so that that stopper there, under there, that you can see probably, with my big fat fingers, um, is going to be behind that river post, roughly behind it. And then I'm going to turn the river around until you can feel it hitting that post and it can't go any further. And then I'm going to put ribbon needles in. And I'm going to start here. And this is where we can, this takes a couple of minutes so we can sort of, the film will speed up a bit no doubt and um, next time you see it I'll be putting in the last couple of needles. Good if they had an automatic thing for this. This is the thirty two sixty four cylinder and river. Um, we've already sent there's three cylinders and rivers with this machine. We've already sent the others to the um, customer that's bought this machine so this is the only one that I retain but it's doing a nice job. Um, just a side note the other cylinders will be a bit tight for a while um, even a little nail file in the, in the slots will loosen them up. Um, they take a little while to wear in being new uh, like anything new usually does. Maybe coming around I'm getting a bit shaky in my old age, so that's why I'm going a bit slow. Um, I'm just going to adjust that back a little bit. Yeah, what's happened here? Great, something's jammed up. Two or three river needles. Um, couple more to go here. One. And we're in our last river needle. And we are now ribbing. Okay, so I've done a few rows of waist ribbing. I've put my hand up there to feel. There's no drop stitches. Everything's going good. So now I'm going to separate the selvage. And a little bit of separator yarn, which I can't recommend highly enough. Some people use ravel cord and all sorts of things, but proper separator yarn designed for sock machines, for knitting with sock machines, is the best thing in the world. 
So it comes out separator yarn and a couple of rows, that's all I do. Break it. There's a trick to breaking it, it looks easy, but it's not quite as easy for some people. So now I've joined my main yarn back on and we're going to knit. Now we come up, now here comes our main yarn into the sock, do one row round and then we put the in-out switch to out. So that's that lever there and that stops it knitting on the um, ribber and we're going to go round one, two, three rows then bring that back in and then we'll do 30 rows of ribbing and doing that three rows gives me a nice bit of bulk in in the middle of the selvage um, so that you don't get that loose selvage that some people do um, gives you a nice tight selvage and I did these socks on another machine yesterday but um, there's that nice tight selvage again there so now 30 rows of ribbing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of course I could have set the row counter. Um, I'm a bit dumb, I always forget my so used to counting in my head. Um, I'm going to check up there. There's still no drop stitches, so that's good. So now we're going to go to three and one rib. So we're going to swap over to a three and one rib and do 75 rows of three and one rib. And I'm going to bring this around to the needle retainer. Just pull the spring out. Come around a little bit. It's a very small needle retainer spring in this machine, so it's a little bit strange. This machine's actually going to Germany. Um, and I know the lady who bought it, Evelyn, is going to love this but it is going to take her a little bit of getting used to so the golden rule I guess is if something sticks or something stops don't bash it um, figure out why it's done that and quite often it will be just a matter of pushing a needle down um, a tiny fraction just to get it back into the path um, these are old needles and one of the reasons this machine is still sitting here on waiting for needles I um, sent to Pat Fly in the States for new needles for this machine so I could send it away with a new set and USPS have kindly lost them so Pat has now sent me another lot of needles which should be here early this week and this machine is going to be posted then um, with its new set of needles because these needles are very old Where am I? Probably should have my chair up a little bit higher so I get a better reach, but that'd be helped. Hmm. We're nearly round.
<laughs> got the shakes. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Getting old sucks. Make sure all your latches are still open and um, everything's hunky dory. Right, round two. Last one. That's all the needles in. And I'm now going to take the cast on basket off. Just release that and hang the buckle. the buckle. We all know what a buckle is. So that's weights hung on the buckle. Make sure they're nice and even. And I'm going to set the row counter this time to naught. And I'm going to do 75. I'll do 70 rows for the leg. 70. Making sure that all these and there's that jam I was talking about, and it was just one little needle there, tiny, tiny fraction out. One, two, three. I found a needle that's no good. No problem. Let's get rid of it. It's a bit like fishing. You can feel it when you're um, when you start cranking away. I'll throw that. Get rid of it. Replace it. All good. I've done 65 rows of three and one ribbing, which is fine. That's enough. Or shall I do a bit more? Oh, I might as well go the whole hog. 65. We'll go to 75. Right up. We've done 75 rows of ribbing. And you might be able to see around, around here. We'll pull that separator thread out. Shitty old buckle, it's not um, holding very well. <laughs> Pull the separated thread out. And away we go. Come on. And that's separated. There's your one and one ribbing. And I'm going to take that buckle off and put another buckle on. That buckle's useless. And there's your three and one ribbing. This is actually an old cone of Repco yarn that um, I found in the back of a cupboard. So I'll put the brass buckle on this time just to make that look. It'll hold it better too. Repco yarn's very slippery. Okay, now we've gone to our, got our um, three-in-one ribbing done, and now we're coming to the fun part. Let's hope it works. 
So I'm going to come around here and I'm going to bring my needle retaining, um, my spring retainer round to the first red mark for a heel and then I'm going to start taking rubber needles out and transferring them down for the heel. There's not too many to, to do fortunately. And then hopefully we'll see the magic happen. The heel and the toe is exactly the same, but when we get to the toe, we'll actually take the river off, so you'll get an even better view with any luck. It's just like any machine where everything is exactly the same as, it, as any normal machine up until this point of doing the heels and toes. Um, everything's exactly the same. It's actually taken weeks to restore this machine just to get all the springs at the right tensions and it's not just as easy as throwing some new springs on. Uh, okay, that's our heels done. That's our um, needles done. Now we come around to... jam there somewhere come around that was so you when you get that little jam just go around and push those needles because it's quite often one you've got to take the drive spring out from the river to stop the river working and bring up the back needles just like you would normally do on any machine if you're ribbing with the river on Um, a couple more, right, and if I've got this right, I'm going to come around here, and same as any other machine, put yarn behind the first cylinder needle to make sure that hole is locked, and put your heel spring in. This heel spring probably needs a bit of adjustment. down a bit so there's not quite as much weight on it now here's the nitty-gritty the back lever push the back lever in so we've come around here push the back lever in and that lifts up that cam there I guess you call it a cam and round we come and you'll see it will lift that one and that lets the bottom lifter in and this needle came up and i bet you didn't see it so mr mayor might have to come right around here and get very close up because these are really hard to see right watch that needle there so so i'm going to do the same thing put that behind the first one so watch that needle there, right, can you see it starting to lift, and it came up automatically, and round we go again, we hit that cam, we come back, and there goes that needle is coming up automatically. Hit in, hitting the cam, go around a little bit, and up comes the needle. It's like bloody New Zealand magic, this, I tell you. <laughs> so now, I'm not going to tempt fate anymore, I'm going to put my um, heel hooks in, 
um, the usual positions. I use a heel hook, I should show you. This is what I use for a heel hook, and the weight hangs like that. Now that's a V-shape, and of course your stitch cam is called a V-cam, and the word V is the important part. V means that everything's coming down into that V. Um, so I don't use forks. I like eating my dinner with a fork, but not making socks. So I've put the two V cams about four rows in and four rows down um, for a start, and I hang a weight on them. Now, for this machine, I use a, a, another hook in the middle. So I come into the middle, and I hang another weight on the middle there. And it can be a small weight, actually, just a little weight. And I just keep my fingers on them, just to keep that tension on them. And there's the needle going up. And there's the needle going up. And of course, we're going to come in until we get to these red marks here, which is the halfway mark. And then we turn that part off and we turn the other cam on. Now I can feel that there's not a lot of tension on here, so I'm going to move my heel hooks up a bit. And in a bit, I can find where they are. Those. And up we go. So that I didn't get that heel hooked too right. So just that's better. You can see that's better. And up we go. Up we go. go. You might be able to see these coming up from the front. Really easy now. Okay. There it comes up. And we've done the first half. So we take this lever back and we lift this lever up. And we put, once again, I always put that round that first needle. Come on, yeah. Round that first needle. And there's a little cam in here. Come around. Here. And did you see that little cam pop up there? See that little thing? I do, yep. Yeah. Right there, that little cam popped up. This lever worked that, and it hits the top of the needle and pulls it down. Wow. And here we go for that one. And down come the needles. You've got to be a little bit careful here. Sometimes these needles are, are actually up a little bit too high and that cam will go under them. So you've got to just make sure and keep your eye on that cam that it's, that it, it's actually catching the needle or it sort of makes a bit of a muck up if it doesn't. And make sure your latch is open. Um, they're usually pretty good, but the odd one will come out and be, not be open. And I'm going to move my heel hooks. Up. Just to get a bit more tension there. And down comes our cam. 
the reason I had to bang that needle was because that's an old needle, probably got a groove in it. Can you see them going down, Bruce? You can, you can. And I just noticed that pulled off. You've got to have your wits about you a little bit with this, but practice makes perfect. I did about 10 pairs of socks on this thing the other day and just, went, you know, the more I did, the better I got. It's a dodgy needle. You're probably going to see even a little bit easier when we've done the foot. And we take the, and that's the last stitch. So now we're going to put the drive pin back. If I can find the bloody thing. We got to put it, there it is. Put the drive pin back in its hole. Push, push all the, uh, That off. Um, I'm just not quite sure of the sequence here now. Um, pushing these down, getting them back into work. Now, you might have to put that cam back into place because I think I knocked it off um, from working, which wasn't probably the best thing to do. Um, I'm going to have to come around here a bit to get those ones down, but that's all right. Take this off up the top. Made a bit of a cock up there, but it's nothing that really matters um, when we... I pushed the needle down in the wrong spot. Um, I hadn't quite put that cam back, uh, put the lever back down in the right spot, so that's one of the things you've got to get used to, but that's fixed and, and um, just had to put that cam back out of work. So, so now we're going to do the We'll do 55 rows for the foot. One, two, three, four. Right, there's 55 rows for the foot. I'll take my heel springs off. And now I'm going to take the river off so you'll be able to see the heel lifter working even better once the river's off. So I'll come around and use our spring retainer. make more of these videos but I don't have the um, expertise to do the filming. There's a bit of work in filming and editing this sort of stuff. I know. But it's about time I made one for the ultimate I guess. It's, it's only been 11 years or something. <laughs> Chairs on wheels are really good.
to go and then we can lift the river off. Okay. Hope there's no drop needles in it. <laughs> drop stitches. Whoa, look at that. There's the river off. And now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go, go, come round one, there's a needle up, so that's what I'm talking about, just doesn't take much. So I'm going to come round to there, I'm going to lift these needles out of work now to do the toe. And I'm going to put that lever back now for the first half of the needles. So that's that lever as it goes up, push it forward. Come round behind that first one and bring that yarn round. Engage the heel spring. And there we go. You see that? Certainly did. Yeah. And now we'll come round to the second one. You've got to go right round to the second one. And here we go. Up she goes. You see it on this side better. It hits this lever. Cam go. And up she goes. And what happens when you're coming back, that's actually lifting that cam back into position. So it's lifting it back up and locking it again until the next pass. And that tells me that my heel hook needs to be put back on. So here we are. I can show you the heel hooks now too. So about... Round about four stitches then four stitches down. And then I put that weight on in the middle. And hang this one in the middle. Uh, if I was knitting on an ordinary machine, I wouldn't be putting that one in the middle. I'd just use my fingers. But with this, it's just that extra little bit of insurance. And Just about had a disaster, then the yarn all um, caught up in the top of the heel hook. That's the only thing with the Repco yarn. Um, just about lost the lot, but I managed to save it. Oh, come on, you bugger. Certainly tell the old that needles with a bit of a groove on the bottom um, always give a bit of resistance and good needles go really well. I'm going to move my heel hook in a little bit. Both sides, about four in, four out. Four down, I should say. And first half of the toe is just about done. that up, take that down, and I'm going to do it again, I'm going to put that first yarn round there to stop that hole that we quite often get, and where am I, in the 
ham department. There we go. And that one came down with the latch up, so you just got to be careful for a start. Hill hooks are not quite in the right spot. That's better. And pulling the needle down. Pulling the needle down. Down. And socket's done. So you pull that front lever back down. You just probably went a little bit too far. You go all your needles down as far around as you can go. Make sure latches are open. Take that off. I went round just a little bit far. That's right. Latches down, latches down, all the latches, there's a latch closed, so that would have got a drop stitch. And just pull that cam back into, I think it was that one, one of them. Ah, <laughs> right on the very end I had a latch open. Um, Can't be helped too late, but I can um, latch it up and hide that. We can fix that. So we had a needle that um, a latch that d did stay open. I'm going to take the knitting off the machine now. There we go. One rib sock. Three and one ribbing. Beautiful heel and toe. Well. And you've got three 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 and one ribbing on the top of the toe and plain knitting on the bottom, just like any ordinary sock. Done. Fantastic. Dusted. <laughs> Yep. Hope you love it. It's going to take a lot of practice, but I'm sure you'll get good at it. <laughs>